Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. We're continuing our EPA Swim uh, tutorial and training series. So if you haven't seen the previous eight videos, you should definitely check that out. That's in the description down below. Learn how to use the EPA Swim. In that series, we went over the basic tutorials. You can also pick up our hydrology terms cheat sheet, five to six pages of hydrology terms used in the industry that you can look up and use at any time. That's 100% free. You can get that in the description as well. But now we are going to launch into these sample projects. So the previous eight videos went over the basic tutorial, everything included in that. And then we also see here that they include uh, eight of these sample projects. And so we're going to go through them. They include a little bit of instructions that we can sort of explore some more of the facets of EPA Swim here. So I'm going to go into the site runoff drainage sample project here. So let's open this one up. A nice text file uh, comes included. And just like the other videos, you're going to watch me model and work in this project real time uh, to get an idea of what it's like working in the software. So this is a site drainage model. And it says here, this example models runoff quantity and quality in a 39 acre residential subdivision. It consists of seven subcatchments connected to a system of swales and culverts that convey runoff to an outfall. A single pollutant TSS is modeled with three land uses that produce different rates of buildup and wash off. An antecedent dry period of five days is used to allow for an initial buildup of TSS to occur. Rainfall time series data for several two hour design storms of different return periods are also provided. And they give some suggestions here, some suggestions for running this example. So the model is set up to analyze the two year, two hour storm event over a six hour period using dynamic wave flow routing. We covered that in the earlier videos with a 15 second variable routing time step and a five minute reporting step. So we're going to run the simulation and view the status report, taking note of the continuity error, as you'll want to do in any swim project. So we've got negative 0.04% surface runoff, 0.01% flow routing, and 1.04% quality routing. Not bad. So we're taking note of what that was. Looks like we're in good shape there. Um, and so we ran that one. Then step three, select some different summary output variables, e.g. subcatchment, total runoff, node hours flooded, link max degree for viewing on the study area map. So we're going to, uh, okay, that's done. Report summary. So we can view a number of different things here. Subcatchment runoff, we can view it for each of the subcatchments here. Peak runoff CFS. Uh, we have node depth, we can view node depth here. Uh, link flow, and then there should be a link pollutant uh, load here, the TSS and pounds for each of the conduits. So that's conduit sets some interesting statistics there. And then it says, then select some output time series variables, such as uh, subcatchment runoff, link flow, no TSS to view on the map. Then use the day time controls on the map browser to move back and forth through time. Okay, so we're going to want to go to the map tab here. And we're going to select some themes here. Subcatchment, we're going to look at, well, what did the instructions say? So subcatchment runoff. So we have runoff there. Uh, link flow and node TSS. So TSS. And then we should be able to find flow here. Flow values. Okay, so we got these three parameters here. We can see they're color coded uh, for what are ti whatever time we are in during the project. So for dark blue, for the nodes, the subcatchment, and then the link. So if we start uh, playing here the project, you can see these different uh, nodes and conduits changing color <laughs> as we go through, sort of showing you what is happening um, as this project moves through time. So that's pretty interesting there. We're going to stop that. We don't need to view the whole thing. And then try generating some other types of reports, such as a time series plot and a profile plot. Well, we have a profile plot right here. We want to pick a starting node. I'll just go with C3 to C6, see if we can find a path. No, that doesn't exist. Okay, so we have, let's see what a path that we can, we can make work here. C7, let's try C7 to C9. Find a path. Starting node does not exist. Okay. Junction, maybe I need to use junction J3 to J5. Oops. 
There we go. I'm going to click OK. And so we can see the profile plot here for uh, node J3 to J5. We can view the water level there, the distance and the elevation. That's useful. And then we have a time series plot here. This would be our time series for system precipitation in inches per hour. We can view the, the hydrograph there. And then select a different return period storm for the rain gauge and see how it affects runoff hydrographs and TSS pollutographs. So we're going to change the time series here. Right now it's sect, uh, sele selected to that two year. Oh, well, let's change it to the 10 year and let's rerun the scenario. We can see the continuity error change there. Uh, if we look at these values, we can see how uh, this all changes with that now 10 year storm event. And so this allows you to uh, analyze these different facets uh, of your project here. Eventually it all turns, <laughs> all turns red as the storm event goes on and maybe towards the end, it'll start to uh, go back to the original state. So now, seven, modify the model to run a continuous simulation as follows. Edit the rain gauge and change its data source to file. You can find data source file. We're going to click, uh, click the STA 310, 301. Then it says, uh, edit the simulation options as follows. Change the routing method to kinematic routing. Okay, let's see. So we got to go do some of our project settings. Not there. Okay, if we go to option general here, there we go. Now we can modify that kinematic. We're going to select kinematic here. Um, make the end date January 2nd, 2000 for a two year simulation. January 2nd, 2000. Change the routing time step to five minutes. That's in seconds, so we'll go 300 seconds. Okay. And then run the simulation. This one will take longer because it's using continuous simulation. Then try generating a statistics report to see how the magnitude of various kinds of events are distributed over time. So let's run this one. Run was unsuccessful. Okay, so there's a problem with the routing time step. Okay, now I got to simulate. So I had to change that top menu to five minutes so it's not less than. So that's how to run that in continuous simulation. So that's an overview of the site drainage model. We got a, a bit more of a continuity error with the quality routing. Try during a statistics report to see how the magnitude of various kinds of events. Report statistics. Look at subcatchment one. See the precipitation, the frequency plot. So with more experience, we can probably create a better statistics report there. But that's how to run this site drainage model here. We're going to look at some of the other example projects in future videos. So we'll see you guys next time.